see, the show is going nowhere and neither are you. Oh, don't try and bluff me, girl. I was bluffing before you were born. This company's fallen apart. The future lies with me, producing our own show on our own account. You don't have to work for Charles Belgrave anymore. He's dead. And so is his company. Belgrave Broadcasting is alive and thriving, which is who you all work for. You'd be mad to follow somebody who has a vision of greed and an overreaching ambition. <laughs> what a load of nonsense. She can't make a show. Come on, everybody. I'll make a show, and whoever wants to make it with me, step over this side. Looks like you're on your own, girlie. No, she's not. Oh, I might have guessed it. Max Armstrong, you are a weak-minded fool. You're also a traitor in a turncoat. No, he's not. He's no traitor. He's loyal and trustworthy and true. Oh, bingo! Two losers and a trainee. Great show you'll put up. It'll be pretty good if I front it for Where the bloody hell do you think you're going? Get back over here. I'll pay you back one day, Mother. Anybody else, Millie? Oh, what the hell. you make sure that they do the job properly and if you need a camera technician give me a shout. Oh no, we've got plenty of those already. What are you going to do now? Uh, I've got to sort some unfinished business out. Right. So she got married without telling, telling anyone? Though. That's really weird. Yeah, it's a complete shock to me. You would have thought she would have invited someone to the wedding. Mm. She probably wanted to, but Michael would have stopped her. You know what he's like, antisocial. Mm. Misogynist as well. Never did like him. I'm not surprised he's done a bunk, leaving Annie with the baby. And since when are you interested in women's issues, eh? I must say, though, she's got some bottles standing up to Andrea like that. Wish I'd been there to see the fireworks. Oh, mm. God, she was brilliant. Mm. I was well proud. Mm. Now, I suppose that leaves us in the lurch as far as our jobs are concerned. Better make that phone call. Phone call? Yeah, phone my father. A new work experience. Yeah, I think uh, a new career beckons. No, Matthew Wargrave, es escapologist extraordinaire. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. Yeah. Look, will you help me bring all my stuff out into the corridor? In the corridor? You can't do makeup in a corridor. Huh, just you watch me. I'm going to spend as little time as possible in that room. I don't know. TV station full of down and outs. Oh, you're still here. I just want to say that I'm sorry about what happened. Don't be. Some you win, some you lose. That's life. Yes, but I don't want you to feel defeated. Defeated? Well, I didn't get what I wanted. I suppose that's a form of defeat. And I don't want us to be enemies or feel that you have to leave. Well, of course I have to leave. There's nothing left for me here, is there? Yes, there is. I need your help. It's more for my benefit than yours. Look, don't try and soft soap me, Annie. Michael tried to do that. He needed me to run his television company. Well, you've got plenty of people to run your television show. Max Armstrong, for one. I need Max elsewhere. I need you here. Don't feel you have to leave just because that... Uh... What? You made me look stupid. Look, I'm not leaving because, as you say, I feel defeated. I'm leaving because this company is dying. I might have saved the show, but there's no saving it if it's part of Belgrave Broadcasting. The company's dead, just like Charles Belgrave. You're right. I am. The rumours that are going around the city, they're true. If I don't find the money by the 2nd of January, then we're bankrupt. How much? About £700 million. Pounds. Oh, say again. Charles Belgrave wasted all his money on the bad commodities trading. He was facing bankruptcy when he died. You think it was suicide? No, but I think I do know. No? No what? I have fear for Michael. I think he's in great danger. Michael? 
Is he? No. I don't think so. I'm sorry. Andrea's staying. I thought she'd be out of the building like a shot. She was, but I asked her to come back. Are you sure that's wise? She'll be up to her old tricks again. I don't think so. She knows that I need her help. She also knows that the company's bankrupt. But she might come up with some good ideas how to save us. Sounds pretty desperate to me. Yeah, it is, but that's the length you have to go to to save your company. What length? I, I don't understand. The company, how important it is. It's my responsibility. There's loads of people at stake here. It's like a living thing. And if it's going to die, then what am I supposed to do? I, I don't know what you're trying to say. I've always been taught not to be defeated. And if somebody commits a crime or you try to cover up a crime that's been committed, you would do that, wouldn't you, to save the company? Annie, you still not make any sense. No, am I? If the company can't be saved by legal means, then it's not worth saving at all. That's what I think. But Michael wouldn't say that. Oh, this is all about Michael, isn't it? Annie, what crime has Michael committed? life. You're a bit young to worry about that, aren't you? No, I'm not sure there is one. Mm, me neither. I think it's all this one, only it's broken up into pieces, so it takes a long time, and you just don't remember the missing pieces. Mm, very concise, I agree. I mean, say you were kidnapped by Alien and taken away for a hundred years, and when you got back, it was exactly the same time and place as when you left. But you can't remember anything that's happened. That's like a hundred years of your life that you're not aware of. Precisely. I wonder if I've been kidnapped before and been to fantastic places, only I just can't remember. You know, that must have happened to a dozen guys I know. Well, I could be just waiting for it to happen again and go somewhere else fantastic. Personally, I'm hardly ever here. So you can live for thousands and thousands of years over and over again? You know, I think I'm formulating a theory. Armstrong's first law of drivel. Matthew, you are not taking this seriously. <laughs> How do you know I might be? But you've forgotten. Come on, let's eat. Yeah, good idea. Although I'm not very hungry, because I've just breakfasted. Sorry? On Alpha Centauri in 1823. <laughs> Rumour is, if the company doesn't pay off its debts by New Year, it's going bankrupt. You know, I really don't think that's going to matter. Why not? When Captain Van Dorn gets here, there's going to be quite some upheavals. Why? What's he going to do? Well, I don't know. But I suspect we'll have more to worry about than a few paltry million in debt. A few paltry hundred million, I believe. Well, whatever. Doesn't matter. We'll have bigger fish to fry. I just wish we had some way of finding out what his intentions are. What, Van Dorn's? Yeah. See, we're still reliant on Jason as a go-between. He gets the messages. Without him, there's no way of knowing what sort of disasters might befall us. Disasters? Why disasters? Well, it's just a hunch. Don't worry, we've still got Jason. Yeah, but we're not exactly in his good books, are we? What's done is done. There's no going back. We're just going to have to make the best of it. I think we were wrong. Starting an affair under his nose. I think we did the wrong thing? No, I think we did the right thing. Look, why don't we talk to Jason? I mean, he's a pretty straightforward sort of guy. He'll understand, especially if we explain exactly what's at stake. I think that you should talk to him alone. No, I think you should talk to him with me. I mean, you still have an influence over him. Look, we're in this together, all right? You all right? About what? The paperwork. No inspiration, no solution, no way out. The company's bankrupt. We might as well all go home. You know, it, it's great having you on our side. Oh, I wish I could say the same for you. 
Why the hell did Charles start dealing in copper futures anyway? No, it's supposed to be fixed. He was sweet-talked into it by somebody who promised him huge profits and then welched on the deal to bail him out. Yes, spear mining. Somebody ought to get hold of Jason Spear and hold him by the ears until he promises to keep his side of the bargain. I don't know. Anne is doing that. She told me to steer well clear. What about Michael? Where the bloody hell is he? And he's being cryptic about that. It seems that he's involved in some sort of crime. Yes. She said something awful had happened to him. You know, I always thought he was a bad lot. Typical of him to cut and run just when the going gets rough. No staying power, you see. Well, maybe you came to the same conclusion as you did. If the company's sinking, grab what you can and get out. Well, as I say, the only hope is to force Spear Mining to keep his promise. But they've got no documentation to back it up, have they? So I can't see that happening. The jig's up. Um, did you know that uh, Jason was going to bankroll my company to buy out Belgrade Broadcasting? Yes, I've heard. You'd heard? Of course you bloody heard. You were spying on me at the time. I wonder if you'd done the same to me, you know, made me all those promises and then left me in the lurch. What well, could easily have done. You know, I'm not sure Anne is wise dealing with it on her own. I think we should do it together. I'm not sure it's worth doing it at all. After all, he's hardly going to pay out 400 million pounds out of the goodness of his heart, is he? I mean, what hold she got over him to make him pay? What indeed. I know what you want. What do I want, Sally? I've got it and I've hidden it. And you can ransack my office a million times and you still won't find it. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm willing to make a deal. Oh, yeah? Your company pays my company what it's owed and then you can have it. You're going to have to make yourself much clearer than that, Annie. Don't be the idiot, Jason. I've seen it, remember? You come to my office and we make a deal. Cast iron guarantee that you pay me what I'm owed. Then you can have it. And if you don't want it, I know somebody that does. Hello, Dad. I've just been off with the video. Same terms. What do you think? Yeah, well, I've only just been able to stay ahead of the game, I can tell you. I think I've ridden my luck too far. About three days? Yeah, it's a shame, but can't afford to do otherwise, can we? After this, though, I... I never want to hear about copper futures again. What are you doing going around listening to people's private conversations for? We're not trying to disturb you, Jason, but we do need to talk to you. Oh, yeah? What about? About the messages that Van Dorn's been sending you. Look, we just didn't want our relationship to get in the way. Our relationship? What? Yours and mine, or yours and his? The messages you're receiving are of vital importance. We can't let our personal differences get in the way. Personal differences. Sneaking behind my back, sleeping with my girl. Personal differences. Jason, this is important. Look, I'm really sorry to, about the way things have turned out, but we have to carry on. We've got to know what those messages are. We might, might have a disaster on our hands. You've got to be kidding. Just carry on as though nothing's happened. Chantel, I owe you nothing. I wouldn't pass on a message that you were on fire. And if there's a disaster coming this way, well, better just brace yourselves.
on the next episode of Canary Wharf. What shit, you oaf? He's trying to kill someone. Believe me, if I killed you, it wouldn't be an accident. Very quick for you. I'm sure you'll think of something better, though, in ten minutes. Would you like me to wait? No. Life's too short to match wits with you. <laughs> Giving up already. Mm, not too easy. Oh, apparently, your real name isn't Claudia Zimmer. Oh, no, of course it isn't. That is my adopted name. Do you know what the real one was? No, and neither do you. Shall I tell you? Deirdre. It just came out when Andrea said you were a traitor. It wasn't fair. Good. Yeah. Right, well... I went to see your mother, you know. Did you? Mm. Yeah, we're on speaking terms. Sort of. Well, that's great. How did that happen? Oh, well, when I got the sack, I thought it was all silly that, that, that it should end like that. And my marriage should be broken up because I was spending too much time at work. Oh, Boyle! Oh, everybody in the office knows about that. You're the laughing stock. Well, it'll be a cold day in hell when I worry about office gossip. What I'm worried about, the rest of it. I'll take it that's true, too. What is? My first name. Deirdre. Look, what the hell is wrong with you? Why are you being so selfish? It's just a load of mumbo-jumbo, Mill. Well, it might be mumbo-jumbo, but it's true that you get these headaches, isn't it? Right. Right. And then when you start writing with Belgrave's pen, the headaches suddenly disappear. Right. Yeah. So what are you going to do? You're going to not write out of spite and then just take aspirin for the rest of your life? No, of course not. <sighs> You're right, OK, I'll write them down, but I don't want to give them any satisfaction. OK, well, I'll take the messages and I'll do what has to be done with them. OK, I'll give them to you, but you tell them to keep away from me, all right? I can't handle people creeping about all the time. I don't understand it. He was here a minute ago. What's this? It's one of those messages from the sailors. I was going to say, I've never seen one before. We are the light of Orion, to which three score six and ten will return, delivered by the grace of God and the celestial navigation of Johan van Dorn. <laughs> Sounds like something Jenny would write. Ryan will be able to sort it out. Let's go and find him. <laughs>